So in this video, we're going to talk about mediation, moderation, and the third variable problem. The reason why we want to talk about all three of these different types of situations in the same video is because they're very easily confused. At the heart of it, you've got some type of relationship between variables that you want to understand a little bit better. So let's say our relationship that we're interested in is listening to Mozart. And let's assume that listening to Mozart actually produces some increase in um, spatial reasoning performance. Back in 1993, Rauscher and her colleagues reported this really influential study in the Journal of Science saying, oops, back in 1993, Rauscher and her colleagues reported a really influential research in the journal Science suggesting that listening to Mozart actually improves spatial reasoning. And so a whole bunch of researchers tried to figure out, well, how does that work? Or under what conditions does that work? Or is this a real relationship? So we're going to use that particular example to talk about those three things. How do we explain that relationship? Under what conditions does that relationship work? Or do different conditions change that relationship? And is this relationship real? Or does listening to Mozart and spatial reasoning just relate to some type of third variable that makes it look like there's a relationship when there really isn't? So first one we're going to talk about is this idea of a mediating variable, a mediating variable. Now, what does mediator mean? Well, you know, when people have an argument, sometimes they need a go-between or somebody to try to make sense of what's going on between the two parties, trying to explain what's going on between the two parties. And that's what happens in, with a mediating variable, too. So we have our general relationship here that we're looking at. So listening to Mozart and how that affects some type of spatial reasoning. I don't know, I'm going to make a Rubik's Cube without too many colors. Okay? And there is some other type of variable that listening to music changes, which then leads to a change in spatial reasoning. So when you're listening to music, one of the things that changes is that your mood or arousal differs. So I'm just going to call this arousal here. So when you're listening to upbeat, nice music, your arousal goes up and also your mood improves. So some researchers suggested that, well, if this happens while you're listening to Mozart, your arousal goes up, your mood improves, then maybe that change in arousal leads to spatial reasoning. In other words, it's nothing special about Mozart itself that's leading to a change in sp spatial reasoning. It's that listening to Mozart produces a change in arousal, which consequently produces a change in spatial reasoning. And there was some research that suggested that, indeed, the relationship between listening to Mozart and spatial reasoning was mediated or explained by arousal. So when you're specifying a mediating variable, what you're really trying to do is asking the questions, why does that relationship exist? Or how does it exist? What explains that relationship that I'm observing? What other variable might explain that relationship? Okay, so that's a situation with a mediating variable. Now, there's also a possibility that a relationship can be affected by some type of moderating variable. So let's go back to our original example. So we've got listening to Mozart and spatial reasoning, affecting spatial reasoning. But when we're dealing with moderating variables, or a moderating variable, what we care about is for whom does this relationship apply? Does it apply for different people? Uh, when does it apply? Does it apply at different time periods or under different conditions? So when we talk about a moderating variable, we're asking for whom does this relationship exist? 
when might this relationship exist? Under what conditions might this relationship exist or might change? Okay, might change. So let's say, for example, we're interested in examining the moderating effect of preference. Preference for listening to Mozart. Maybe it's the case that those individuals who enjoy listening to Mozart have a preference for it even before listening to it. So just automatically say, you know what, I really like listening to Mozart. That's really nice. Maybe they're the ones who show a strong relationship between listening to something they prefer, like Mozart, and spatial reasoning. Whereas individuals who don't have a strong preference for Mozart don't show a strong relationship between listening to Mozart and subsequent spatial reasoning. There's actually some research out there to suggest this too. Uh, some researchers, Nantias and Schellenberg, did a study where they had people either listen to Mozart or listen to um, a recording of a Stephen King short story before doing a spatial reasoning test. And those individuals who preferred the Stephen King story did better on the spatial reasoning test when they heard Stephen King than when they listened to Mozart, and vice versa. Those people who stated they would prefer Mozart did better on the spatial reasoning test uh, when they heard Mozart than when they heard the short story by Stephen King. So a moderating variable talks about how a relationship between an independent and dependent variable or predictor and outcome variable changes because of, of different groups or when certain things happen or under certain conditions. Now a third possibility is that you have a third variable basically accounting for the relationship between your IV and your DV or your predictor and outcome variable, however you're specifying it. So again, here's our nice relationship of listening to Mozart and having an effect on spatial reasoning. But a third variable says there's something else out there in the environment that explains variation in both of those variables. So let's say this, okay? What if my preference for listening to Mozart is related to introversion? And it just so happens that introversion also is positively correlated with spatial reasoning. So in other words, I have people who are introverted really liking listening to Mozart and getting a big bump in positive emotion or arousal for listening to Mozart. And it just so happens that introverted people, regardless of whether or not they listen to Mozart, do really well on spatial reasoning tests. So in this case, the entire relationship between listening to Mozart and spatial reasoning is kind of false. It's spurious because variation for both of those variables has to do with some other third variable that's, that you're not interested in, like introversion. Okay, so in this particular video, to recap, you learned that a third variable can have different relationships with an independent and a dependent variable. On the one hand, a third variable could have a mediating relationship where it does serve to explain the relationship between the IV and the DV. So in other words, the IV happens, it leads to a change in your mediating variable, which then produces a change in your dependent variable. Alternatively, you can have a third variable serve as a moderator. And so you have this relationship between the IV and the DV, or the predictor and the outcome, but that relationship differs or depends upon some type of third variable. So the relationship differs across different groups of people um, or under particular conditions. A moderating variable is just a special case of something called an interaction, which you might be familiar with when you're talking about complex experiments. The final option is that a third variable actually serves to uncover that the relationship between the IV and the DV is really spurious. It's just 
by chance because you didn't take into account this third variable that just happens to be producing the effect that you see.